All right, welcome to the next edition of Diggs Sideline Podcast. We are your host, Sam. And my name is Pat, as always. And um, lucky for us, we have our first ever guest appearance. Um, I'm going to let him introduce himself, but he is just a big teddy bear to me. Uh, (laughs) One of my best friends. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex Stadnick. I am honored to be a guest on this podcast. I am the fluffiest Viking fan you'll ever done see, (laughs) and I'm just, I'm happy to be here. (laughs) We're happy to have you, Al. Uh, So... Another big win this week. Yeah. Um, I think I was texting both of you. I really needed that start to the oh. game. <laughs> <laughs> Pat saying, no. I needed this. <laughs> no. I, uh, I was happy it started the way it did. I was annoyed because I couldn't get it at the start. Oh. I randomly, they were giving me like Fox Chicago. So it was trying to give me the Packer That's game. Weird. I said, absolutely <laughs> not. I'm not watching Broncos. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see this garbage. Yeah. 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 So, so I had to look up the the Thielen touchdown, but man, I was happy, oh, so yeah. happy to see it. It, it was a great start. Yeah. I, I I was I I think after last week and everybody kind of went into nine one one mode. Yeah. I think this was a good kind of reset that yeah, everybody just I needs think, to calm down. I think your co-host sent it into nine one one emergency <laughs> mode, if I'm not mistaken. Listen, guys, I was just frustrated with Kirk. Okay. That's just that's all that was. I don't yeah. know how much of a fan you are. Well, okay. So again, I think. <laughs> I think that uh, the the Vikings took a took a listen to Dig Sideline podcast because what do we say? <laughs> we said we need to get Kirk some high percentage throws, yeah. build his confidence, get some play action, and that's exactly, exactly what they and, did. And that's, let's let's talk about that first drive. Yeah, um, we started off with some great running plays with Cook, getting oh. him going, and then um, you know the touchdown to Adam Thielen on the play action. It's phenomenal, it's phenomenal, flawless, yeah. smooth. Does anyone want to yeah. talk about you know Adam Thielen's cut there? Oh. <laughs> He I'll, just, I'll let you guys go for it. He it was just it was beautiful. That guy can run a route. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, he was wide open. He was wide open. And yeah. what's interesting too is I'm going to give pre- uh, credit to the Packers again. Whenever we were doing play action rolls on last week, Packers always had a guy there. Yeah. And Kirk was running out. He could have started a little fire, built yeah. a little home, and still get the pass off. Right. <laughs> right. No, I I'll tell you what. So watching the replay on TV. Uh, so Thielen, he he sold the poster out to whoever was covering him, and then he ended up running a corner. And even watching the replay, I was still sold on Adam Thielen's poster. I, I yeah, was well, like, right. <laughs> I was like, oh, he well, moved. And yeah. what's and what's crazy is you know that play was all designed to to stay to the left, for and sure. then out of yeah. nowhere, yeah. Thielen just cuts. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, and the guy's got, he's got a knack for just great route running. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I still cousins to me as much as he frustrates me and everyone reasonably so. He still makes throws that I know every almost every Viking quarterback in the last five to six years can't make. Right, and he sometimes he's he's inconsistent for sure. But sometimes he'll drop a dime where it's just like, oh, why can't you yeah. do this every play? It's right? Beautiful, so, yeah, exactly. And I, that's where the frustration comes from as Viking fans. You yeah, know? it's you absolutely know, it's just the the inconsistency. Yeah, Kirk. So I again I said it last week on the podcast. I'm yeah. going to reiterate it, Kirk. If you can get us to the postseason. I'm going to buy a jersey. All right? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I'm going to interject. I'm buying one, too. Hey, oh, wow. there you go. Wowee. I, uh, no jersey buying for me, but I, I'm buying plenty of stock. I'm, I'm not selling off quite yet. Yeah. We got oh, time. Oh, man. So, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of the initial drive. You know, Bailey with the extra point. God bless him. Um, God bless him. <laughs> uh, and then Oakland kind of got off to a good start, too. Yeah, you know? they were running the ball. Josh yeah. Jacobs kind of started mm-hmm. having his way with our defense. Right. And Jacobs was actually sick all week. Yeah, yeah. A bit of he a, lost some, like 15 pounds. Yeah. He's on yeah. my fantasy team, ten to, so I was, yeah. Yeah, 10 to 15 pounds, yeah. but he looked fine. You know who else was mm. running really well was Washington, and I was surprised because yeah. mm. I knew he was kind of a solid change of pace back for them, but he kind of had to carry the load a little bit with uh, with Josh Jacobs being yeah. being sick, and he did a he did a really good job. I hated it because I, yeah. <laughs> I wanted Jacobs on there the entire time, but that's for fantasy problems. Yeah, <laughs> fantasy yeah. football is a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's mostly a curse, <laughs> but neither here nor there. Um, so, so yeah, they ended up not scoring on that drive anyways, but they were running well. Yeah. Um, but something that has just been bothering me is the amount of penalties that we're having. Oh, correct. So, unbelievable. An alarming number. Not as bad as Oakland though. No, no. that is true. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm going to give you the coldest take of all time. Hit us. Oakland is a bad football team. <laughs> John Gruden <laughs> cannot coach in today's modern NFL. I'm just going to yeah. throw that out there. Yeah. yeah I think he hasn't we, proved we, it once. We talked about that last week is that John Gruden has not evolved with the game. Not at and, all. And I, my, kind, my take on it last week was sort of, you know, that, that might play well for him because everybody's trying to play the, the modern game of football and John mm-hmm. Gruden still trying to play football 20 years ago. But yeah. it, 
<laughs> Zimmer yeah. took care of business. And not the not gonna not gonna make this a Timberwolves, Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, but I feel like it's very similar to Tom Thibodeau in that way. Yeah. Where That's actually a really good he yeah, he, yeah. he established who he was in the early two thousands. Right. Everything was great, everyone loved him, went away for a bit, came back and has no clue what they're doing. Right, exactly. I would imagine they both are working exactly. at McDonald's and, and that's here too. And it's a shame because Oakland does have a lot of talent. Yeah, for you sure. Know, being squandered. Yeah. Not this year though, man. They're I think they're gonna be top three worst team in the league. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I mean, they did trade away half their team <laughs> last year. Yeah. I mean, Khalil Mack, yep. um, Amari Cooper. Yep. Yeah. You know, and a couple others, but yeah. it's a shame. They're just yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um overall though, it was you know, it was just a great game. Yeah. Um, so what did bring the Raiders back into the game a little bit was on a whoopsie doo flea flicker. The one <laughs> thing that Mike Zimmer just can't stop, I guess. <laughs> oh man. And who was supposed to be on coverage? Eric, Eric Wilson. Wilson. Yep. Who or was, if we want to say Anthony Barr. Or Anthony Barr. Yeah. So he yeah. was, so Eric Wilson was playing for Anthony Barr who was out. And, uh, I'm starting to wonder, I I've said it multiple times on the pod that, I don't think Anthony Barr is great in pass coverage. I'm wondering. I'm starting to wonder if that's just Zimmer's scheme. I I, I don't know. Unless Al's got something to say, I'm gonna say no because I think Barr and Wilson have kind of that same style of play. Sure. I think Barr might be a little quicker, but um, but you look at Kendricks. That guy, every game that plays, he yep. looks better and better and better. Yeah. I yeah. I was just I'm amazed at every play he makes. Yeah. yeah so so Kendricks. Uh, when the running game started to get going, Kendricks was able to shut it down. He, after, in the second half, he just, they couldn't get past the line of scrimmage. Right. It was, right. It was awesome to watch. Yeah. Um, speaking of the running game, let's just, let's just get into the Vikings running game. Cause that's just kind of the fun of it. Yeah. Um, so Al, we're, you this got any, is the, the offense. Off- yeah. Let's, okay. yeah. Let's yeah. bring up cook and Madison. I know you had a little hot take on Madison. Love it. I think I, and this is, we played a bad Oakland team, but, and looking at the stats, I think we could have a two-headed monster here that rivaled not in play style, but in potency and danger Production. of like an Ingram and Kamara yeah, two-headed monster. Definitely. And you know, and Sam actually sprinkled that early in week. I think yeah. in the first episode that we first had. Episode, yeah. was, yeah, well, the first it was the first game review when when Madison just ran all over uh, the Falcons. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. he is he bruises he he does yeah. everything that that you need in a in a change of pace back and well, i and, love it and his touchdown this mm-hmm. week it mm-hmm. was his first nfl touchdown and it was a beaut way hell of a way to do it oop a short. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys it's all good <laughs> uh yeah, yeah no he so he <laughs> he took off on the four yard line yeah and i think he he might have got a foot down like on the one yard line Something like that yeah but like he he didn't fully come down until he was in the end zone it yeah. was crazy yeah 100 percent. that athleticism is it i mean it and i love stefanski's play calling i love what kubiak's doing because yeah. now it's like all right no matter what running back is out there you have to respect the like the yeah. passing game and the run game like you can't take plays off against that team absolutely which is so exciting i know yeah. and i, I know. Just, and i want to say it again i know we've been saying all podcasts but Cook and Madison. I mean, you at first glance you don't realize who's out there. No, right. like they're the same body. Type. Yeah, right. It's exactly. Yeah. yeah, Cook is obviously a little more elusive. Yeah. which the guy's just a freak of nature. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I mean, the runs he was making. Yeah, I think we as Vikings fans have known that this guy was special, but obviously injuries. You know, the ACL and then last year's hamstring, so we, we didn't get to see all of him. Yeah. But this is why we got this guy. Yeah. yeah. Is exactly. He, is he still on top of the leaderboard for running backs oh, throughout yeah. the league? I think he, is. I would, he yeah. would have to be. I don't know. I mean, he, he, he was coming into the week. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't think he. And Bar- I don't think he Barkley went down. left the game. Yeah. Barkley had like thirty yards. And I'm not sure how Marlon Mack's doing. Yeah, I know Zeke dropped dropped one twenty five. I think so. Ooh. I don't know where he was before this week, but yeah, I, I think Cook is still number one. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I think yeah, I think, I think people just forget that we're in an era of modern medicine where you know. People come back much quicker from ACLs, yeah. but that's still a two-year injury yeah. to right. get your full yeah. form back. And speaking of injury or uh, ACLs, ACLs, let's talk about Mike Hughes. Yeah, I mean, were First we all just back. thrilled to see that little? I short was so happy. I know you were, especially <laughs> especially after last week when we had to play our practice squad guys yeah. and they're getting beat by the Packers receivers. Yeah. And Rogers I was, was licking his chops. Oh, I was so happy to see Hughes come nom, back. Nom, nom, yeah, nom, nom, and I was so nom. happy to see all of our uh, our cornerbacks not go down yeah. throughout the game and yeah. while we're on cornerbacks you know this has been kind of flirting in the in the news and i kind of want to get you guys opinion on this yeah what are our thoughts on the news about jalen ramsey kind of uh-huh. our names being sprinkled out there yeah. you know and i don't know if we've got the cap for it or the 
I'm sure we got there, the picks for it, but what are our thoughts on if the Vikings were to make a splash move like that? Because in my opinion, I think Spielman's coming down to his last couple of years here. You think I agree. so? I honest to God think so. Really? I think that when I think our window's closing pretty well, quickly. And I think Zimmer still has a couple more years. If Zimmer goes, I will cry. Yeah. I'll, I'll cry that day. I'll mourn yeah. his loss. But I think I think if we don't get out of this season and next without winning a playoff game, I think both of them are probably sure. You're saying both. I I think so. I I don't. The Wolves have invested so much money into this team, into this identity, that you know this will be what what year in two years what will it be? Well, Spielman's Spielman. been here for a while. Yeah. Spielman's so that's why that's time. why I'm saying yeah. Spielman is on a shorter lease. I, right. Shorter, I agree, but I do think because I mean, you well, can't, Zimmer yeah. has a winning record, and among coaches that you know might be on the ropes, I, that's you know that's that's a rare thing. There's that, for and sure. then if you look at prior to Zimmer's arrival, we were a trash defense. Oh, yeah, well, we for were, sure. And now we've been top five. Literally all five years that he's been here. Yeah. So well, I think he's got a little more of a leash, but you're right. Yeah. Still in the hot seat. Because I think I think if this defense starts to starts to disband, we are also in the sports culture of if you're not winning, what do you you know, if you're not winning recently, what are you doing for me? Right. And, you know, if let's say God forbid we miss the playoffs this year, we miss the playoffs next year. That's three years in a row without a playoff appearance. That doesn't look good. I know your right. record's good, but that just doesn't look good. I don't want Zimmer gone. I think he's a phenomenal coach, mm-hmm. but I just just with today's sports culture, there's just no patience. There's no yeah. patience for letting a system. Play. Yeah, I understand what you guys are saying. I'm actually I'm a little bit more optimistic. I yeah. think I think you you guys are right. looking at what Zimmer's done just for our defense alone and how consistently yeah. mm-hmm. you know they're they're being talked about as the best crew in the league. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think Spielman has a bit of a tighter leash. Yes, uh, but let's not forget Spielman assembled the team that we have. Yeah, so. And- and I think they both did a great job, and I do think they're going to make the playoffs this year. So, like, right. I don't. I think we're talking about something that probably won't happen, but mm. I, I, it's not out of the realm of possibility for me. I agree. So. I do agree. Yeah. So yeah, but okay. Back to Jalen Ramsey. I was just curious. Oh yeah. Are, are we? Oh, that's what we Are we with, yeah. for it? Are we against it? I don't Is know. He I a was bit actually of a troubled head. I was, our... I was. I was kicking the can around in my brain about you know how do I feel about Jalen Ramsey and I. I think the only thing that is negative about the current situation that we're in is Trey. It's putting Trey Wayne's on the hot seat, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Is it messing with his head? Is it going to affect his play to for him to think, oh, geez, if we bring this guy in, I'm, or is it going to make him play harder and better S- to Sam, try to save it's, his job? It's the greatest thing that'll ever happen. <laughs> 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 Trey yeah. Wayne's is also on a short leash, in yes. my opinion. That's true. <laughs> He's That's been true. on a short leash. But in a league full of, you know, cornerback depth is always an issue. I don't see him. We just like cutting sure. him. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, I guess I'll quick say I would be for Jalen Ramsey. I, yeah, I'd be yeah. all for it. I know too. we'd have to give up a first round pick, but I think, again, my if you look back on the old podcast, my biggest concern is the cornerback position. Right. For sure. Reason Rose, and, yeah. Rhodes is still, yeah. And if you're, I am not opposed to trading around, to, to trading a first round draft pick for a known talent. Uh, I agree. Especially when, when you right. look at uh, how many first round draft picks we've wasted in the past few years, like on Christian Ponder and whoever else we drafted Who? in the first round. That, Sam Ponder? <laughs> <laughs> and whoever else we drafted in the first round that just ended up being a flop. I'm, if you can get a known talent for a first round draft pick, that's what the draft picks are there for. Yeah. And I know he does have some kind of off the field and on the field issues, if you will, but I know Zimmer loves those feisty guys. And if anyone yeah. can kind of fix someone up, it's, it's Bill Bilicek and Bill it's Mike Zimmer. Bilicek. Does he have off field issues? I know he's cocky and I, people don't like him. He, but I don't think he has any legal issues. Maybe not off the field, yeah. but I'm just referring to his kind he's of. He's a personality. It could yeah. be a locker room yeah. issue. Personality, yep. He, it could be a locker room issue. And I know that Zimmer is pretty good about uh, keeping those under wraps. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. And then, uh, just Al, do you have any opinion on if you would be for or against him? I'd love it. I was just, in my head, I was thinking of capital that we'd have to give up. First rounder, I'm fine with. It would have to be a player, too. Um, I don't know how... Really? Sp- I think so. For the top, arguably top I think we could, in the league. I think we could get him for a first and a third. Just one. So, well, here's, third, here's what fair. I... Yeah. Just the other day, I was listening, and apparently there's no one's interested right now. So, if anything, I think really? the Jags leverage is kind of slipping so a it's starting to dwindle. Yeah. Yeah. So, you might be able to do the first and a third yeah. versus the first and a player, but yeah. you never know. You know, they could just make him sit. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, well, let's give him uh, yeah. let's give him a third and Trey Wayne. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm sorry, Trey. Yeah. <laughs> if if and I don't know if you can shut me down on this if you want. Um, if you had to trade a player, who would you trade? For Ramsey. For Ramsey. Trey Wayne's. <laughs> and well, they would accept it. That's the key. I guess he would be an upgrade, hmm. but um, gosh, I I couldn't tell you. I have no idea who who would fit that bill. Yeah, I'm okay. not getting paid like Spielman. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I I, 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 I have sure. no idea. Yeah. I would rather do the pick route. 
Yeah. Oh, I 100%. Because you always need bodies, especially cornerbacks. But, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, my next point. So, I just kind of wanted to kind of end that. So, I kind of, before I jumped in the off topic there, um, we ended with the flea flicker and then... Um, it could have easily turned into a 14-21 game. Oh, absolutely. Because um, the Raiders were driving at that point. Yep. And um, I think, Al, you were texting me all game about Waylon, the tight end. Waller. 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 Oh, yeah. gosh, I knew I was no. going to mess that up. You're Waller. Good. Yeah. Um, and fun fact, PA announced that he was the first um, opposing player, any receiver, yeah. to go over 100 yards at U.S. Bank Stadium. Really? Since, since it was built. Whoa. Yeah. So he was doing this whole... Waller alert, you know, yeah. like yeah. every time, you know, near Jeez. the end of the game there. Yeah. But, uh, wow, but going back incredible. to that, to the end of the first half there, they yeah. were driving and it was like a third and like eight, I think. Yeah. And they were just out of field goal range and Waller, it was just out of Waller's hands. And that could have easily been, you know, at least three points. Sure. You know, and then um, a touchdown. So it could have been 14-21. Yeah. Um, That's the, really the only time that Waller messed up because exactly that dude was right. on fire and I'm, I'm not exaggerating you had literally texted me yeah. a minute before he dropped that pass yeah. and i think i was laughing <laughs> he's but, their yeah. he's their tight end, he's their tight yeah. end. Yeah. yeah and he's good he's, he's a, a big boy, boy. Oh, he's a big oh, boy yeah. yeah you know who what our tight end did for us this week is bailed us out of some pretty sticky situations and i'm not talking about kyle rudolph <laughs> i'm talking about irv smith Oh my! Finally, gosh. Irv Smith. Irv Smith. Finally, the we've game. been waiting for this guy. Oh my gosh! He caught a ball on a third and long. Yeah, he caught some that he caught a ball that where he got hit in the air and yeah. he, he took a punishment and and he just held onto the ball. That guy has some hands. Yeah. Oh man, I, I've been waiting yeah. for him. I am so excited that he finally had his coming out party because now. We're not afraid to use him. Yeah. We're not afraid to include him in the game plan. Yeah, and if I, if I can be honest with you guys, I'm not a fan of Rudolph. I think he's just – I think maybe in his earlier years, I was a big proponent of him, but mm-hmm. he's just kind of slow. He's just a good for a kind of – you know, a good block and a PA five-yard, in my opinion. I Yeah, so based on this last game, I think that Irv Smith is the better player. He can block and he can catch just he's younger. Well. The thing that yep. The thing that uh, Kyle Rudolph does is he is a legitimate pass-catching threat. Right, so it makes, for sure. So it makes the defenses have to account for him when he's on the field. So when we're doing – when we're in a jumbo set and we have two tight ends out on the field and we got – you know, they're lined up on the line, you know – you know, you got two guys on the line that can catch the ball. You might have a, another Dalvin Cook out in the back that can swing out. And there's a lot to have to account for there. And I think it's a, he, he is an asset for us because not many teams have two tight ends that can catch the ball. Right. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I think the other part of this um, – sorry, I'm looking up a stat real quick. Um, I think the other part of this is he's a locker room guy. Yeah, and yeah. I think oh, Rudolph. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's a he's yeah. a big time team leader, and the things he does for the community. He yeah. was our uh, he was our Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and he comes from the Harrison Smith, you know, kind of the older Notre draft. Dame. The, yeah, but like, yeah. but like they've been around the team for a long time. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. So he, his presence is noted, and I'm not. And he got his contract. Before, he got his contract. See, and but that's part of the issue for me is he's making 36 mil. It looks like. Yeah. Jeez. Let me. Well, he got you. paid this off season. Yeah. 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 We retained him. So Kelsey's making 46. Jordan Reed's making 46. Jordan like, Reed. Yeah. Poor Ertz guys. is only making 42. Like Trey Burton's making 32. There's, I. I don't like spending that much money on a locker room guy, but like I still like him. Sure, I, yeah. I, I, and that's so. I, this has been my one biggest criticism of the Vikings for, you know, the past three years is mm-hmm. that we 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 develop these emotional attachments to players specifically, and it it's going to end up hurting us in the long run. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when we have a guy like Irv Smith and we can you know save the cap space on Rudolph, then maybe we can go out and get a Jalen Ramsey when yeah. they become available. Definitely. You know who is the who's the best GM in the league, in my opinion, and has no emotional attachment to players and buys low and sells high is Bill Belichick. Yeah, that guy, uh, what, what was the um, – ah, name's eluding me right now, but it was middle linebacker, and it was right when Von Miller got his contract, and he mm-hmm. said, you know, I w- Von Miller was number one. I'm number two. I want a contract just like Von Miller's, and he sent him to the Browns. Literally yeah. like a uh, day after. Jamie, day. Jamie Collins. Collins. Jamie Collins. Yeah, yeah, Collins. Jamie, yeah, Jamie Collins. You know what? Here's the thing about Bill. He won't wish you happy birthday, and he won't show up to your funeral. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> but if you're on his yeah. team. Yeah. yeah, but listen, if coach why, we talk about, yeah. why don't we talk about someone like Bill? Mm-hmm. I'd like to bring up Kobe Bryant. There's something about – Hang on, hang on, hang okay. on, hang on, hang on. Right. Give me okay. a second. Okay. Everyone's okay. reactions yeah. are unwarranted. <laughs> um, I'm, what I'm getting at is Bill and Kobe and these players, I think there's something that separates them from every other player. 
Yeah, it's called compassion. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. What I'm saying is, yeah, exactly. They have that ability to feel zero emotion. 100%. No no compassion. And while it looks rough on the outside to the viewers, it works in game. And you got all these championships, and they've you know they've they've got a lot of history behind them. Right. 100%. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So. Good old Kobe. And you got something to say? I just want to keep talking about our, not necessarily our offense, uh, but people who are scoring points for us, our special teams unit. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> Came through. They yeah. kicked it right down the middle every yes. time. Dan yeah. Bailey. And, yeah. and Cole Quit was punting balls. Uh-huh. Yep. And it just, I I was back to feeling like our special team situation is okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now we get to talk about Daniel Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I texted both of you guys. Dude. All I wanted to see this game was to see him kick and have Zimmer stare and, him down. And you know what? He did. Uh, he did have a, a a field goal opportunity this week. Let's uh, let's play that clip for Carlson. And Carlson's kick is going to hit the upright bounce off. Go- yeah, and he basically shanked it. You could hear that oh, a man. mile away. Yep. That was so that the was announcers, field goal heard around the world. <laughs> the the announcers were talking that game. They were like, yeah, Daniel Carlson, he was with the Vikings last year. He missed three straight field goals in Lambeau Field, yeah. was immediately cut by the Vikings, and he's been doing a great job for the Oakland Raiders ever since. So that's what the announcers were saying. But what you what the announcers weren't talking about was Daniel Carlson as he was taking the field the entirety of U.S. Bank Stadium, giving him boo. <laughs> Boo. I'm sure Zimmer was staring him down and he went out there and he missed the dang field goal. Yeah. They, and I can't, I can't help but wonder if the crowd had played a role in that miss. I think it was Zimmer's stare. You can blame the crowd, but it's Zimmer's aura. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You want to know why Dan Bailey kicked so well? Cause he knew Zimmer wasn't looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> that Daniel Carlson somewhere in the building. I just know it. <laughs> Oh, but incredible. Yeah, so you got to wonder, is John Gruden going to cut this guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I think John knows the situation. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so our, our special teams came through, and our defense made some crazy adjustments. Yeah. yeah, They were, you know, we talked about Oakland running the ball, and they were basically running the ball at will for that first quarter, and our yeah. defense adjusted. Eric Ken- or, uh, yeah, Eric Kendricks, he, uh, he, he covered down, was able to fill that gap. and. Yeah. And they they were having a tough day trying to run the ball. Yeah. And our, yeah, I just thought we made some really good adjustments. Can I tell you about my favorite part of this game? Other please. than winning. Yeah, please. please. It was I, th- I it was either a third down or a fourth down. And they ran and Oakland ran up the gut. And I think it was Hunter and Kendricks. <laughs> and not only did they stuff them, they had him they had I think it was Jacobs. They had Jacobs wrapped up. And they were like screaming at each other, hyping me up whilst holding Jacobs. Yeah. I can't imagine what Jacobs thought. Like these crazy dudes. Oh, yeah. Like it was I loved it. It was so hyped. It, it was like, like, let's no, no, go. no. So who it was was it was Daniel Hunter yeah. and Everson Griffin. Okay. Yeah. And they were they had him wrapped up and yeah. it was Linval Joseph that came out the middle. So Linval yeah. Joseph made the initial contact and those two guys yeah, closed the gap. It off, and yeah. so Linval Joseph got up to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> But you're but, right. They were holding each other on the ground, and they were just that is some, hyping that is each some, other up. Some BDE, some big defense energy <laughs> oh, right there. Yeah. That they were just hold them and talk smack, and I loved oh, it. It was yeah. like it was it was cocky and it was beautiful. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Our defense, they're they're playing with swagger, and uh, and I just hope that we can keep that up. Yeah. Who do we have this coming week? Is it the is it the Bears? The Bears. The Bears. We've got the Bears. Um, so, and that's in in Chicago. Yeah, in Soldier Field. I love it. I yeah. love that they're I hope, giving us I Lambeau just, and Soldier Field at the I start hope, of the year. Yeah. yeah. I hope that our defense can play like they did. Yeah. Like they have at U.S. Bank Stadium the, for these first two games. Because that uh, – we'll, we'll talk about that in the next episode. But their their offense is going to be – it's going to be a puzzle to solve. Mm. So. Right. They uh, Is it night game or is it noon? A nooner? Uh, I think sure. it's – is it a 3 o'clock yeah. game? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. But it's in Soldier Field. And so that's, that's basically two back-to-back – not back-to-back, but – two yeah. initial road games against division rivals yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. It's yeah. a three game. Three game. Yeah. Three o'clock. Okay. All right. So what else yeah. do we like from this game boys? I think the next thing we got to talk about is Dalvon cooks run around the, eighth, oh my around the third quarter there. I mean, we'll, you know, we'll play the clip, but mm-hmm. basically he broke three ankles yeah. all in a second. And, and oh. while I, I, while we love it, I think all of us are at the same time holding our breath because the way he's cutting yes. that it's you got to worry yeah. about his knee. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, – so funny story. I was at the preseason game however many years ago when Teddy Bridgewater, he 
I, I, I remember the play like it was yesterday. He, I, I forget who we were playing, but just right after I said I remember the play <laughs> yeah. like it was yesterday. I forget who we were playing, but Teddy, uh, it was a, the broken play, and, and Teddy just decided to run with the ball, and he put a move on somebody, and he had his beautiful cut, and he got mm. us a first down, and it was just beautiful, and I was like, wow, that guy can cut. Yeah. And that was preseason game number three, mm-hmm. and it was in between preseason game number three and preseason game number four that Teddy's knee thing happened. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, geez, so you're absolutely right. Well, you that's that can be an example of just like stress stress on the ligaments yeah. and like micro tears and yeah. all absolutely. of that stuff builds up throughout the but season. until mm-hmm. then, I will say I am wearing my Adrian Peterson jersey, <laughs> and I am going to have to trade it in for a Dalvin Cook jersey because I think Dalvin Cook is outpacing Adrian Peterson for Minnesota Vikings running well, back. At least he, the season. Yeah. Anyway. He's the first uh, Vikings running back since two, since Adrian Peterson in 2015 to rush for over 100 yards in all first three games. Oh, yeah. man. So it's, you know, we're picking is, up where we left off. He yeah. is something special. Yeah. And yeah. I can't wait to continue to watch him Shut do up. great things. Yeah. I there was, a, there was a kid's joke in there, hitting your kid's joke that I <laughs> thought about making, didn't. <laughs> we're moving on from it. Yeah. <laughs> Dalvin looks... He looks sturdy. He looks yeah, strong, he's, man, he looks, and what confident. I, what I can't get over is how slippery he is. Oh, yeah. man. And even running down the sideline on a couple plays, just tippy-toeing and yeah. getting like another 10 yards on the play. Yeah, his body control is incredible. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. His abs must be rock. Oh, yeah. we've, <laughs> we've, talked about it. we've talked about it before, but he gets faster when he comes out of his cuts. Yeah. It's wild. the weirdest yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. There are not many who can do that, oh. yeah. you know? And, yeah, he's just he's just so much fun to watch. Yeah, yeah he is. If he's, and, he's healthy, man. And I have no problems letting him run the ball all season and Kirk just doing his 150 yards yeah one Absolutely. TD game yeah. and then him just kind of sitting there at the press conference yeah I did okay yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> let's get Dalvin out there yeah I love it yeah um yeah any other I guess we can quick talk about just quick brief um two predictions we had for the game last week I had a sack from Everson Griffin and Hunter um Beautiful. secured those baby yeah, yeah. And then you had I, your, had I had 150 all purpose yards from Dalvin with at least 100 of them being uh being on the ground. on the ground. Ooh. And I think what was it 148 that did Dalvin have all purpose? I'm not sure what Dalvin had. I just had team overall. He had he had a, I think he had 150 all purpose. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So you hit I also said Anthony Barr would have a lockout game but he didn't play. So I'm just going to yeah, exempt myself from that one. Okay. Well, Sam, exactly. I, was, I wasn't going to bring <laughs> was locked out Sam, I wasn't going to bring that up, but that's, that's your right. own No, doing. no, we were 3 for 4 in predictions yeah, and exactly. I bet you know we would have been 4 for 4 if Anthony Barr was healthy. I think so. so. Yeah. We'll just give it to us. Did we'll they, just give it to us. Did they say what what Barr's up to? Like what it was, or he's just scratched. You know, I, I didn't look I at the mi- injury report. I, yeah, I missed it. Good. I'm glad we all established ourselves <laughs> as pro Vikings fans here. So. Dalvin had a 143 total. Yeah, 143. Oh, so close. Close. oh yeah. okay. So yeah. yeah, yeah. 110 being. Yeah. Um, Thanks, yeah. Al. So we're two for four. No. <laughs> yeah, it's closing. Yo, you round up. Pat, okay. You know what? They if, had to take him out of the game early. Yes, so. They did. <laughs> and you know what? If we're playing baseball, your favorite sport. Bat in 500, legendary. Hey, He's a legend. I've come around this year. I know more about yeah. the Twins this year than I have probably more than years. I know this is a Vikings podcast. I know this is a Vikings podcast, but the Twins. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. they're yeah. coming through. So they Minnesota sports through. are up and coming, baby. We're, we're gonna well, go. We're in a golden era of Minnesota sports. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um. What else you guys got? All right. With, got? Uh, so with that being said, I just I before we signed off, I wanted to uh, just bring up the Zimmer post game, uh, not his press conference, but his his locker room address because it was just something magical. Yeah. It gave me and chills. if we're winning, that's something we're going to be slipping into the end of every podcast. And oh. if you do stick around, yeah. you're going to love to hear it because it just gets you hyped. It just gets you hyped. And it's when you see a little emotion from Zimmer, it gets you happy. Absolutely. Yeah. Most yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, so we're going to play that, and with that, we'll be signing off. So until next time, Skull Vikings. And I just want to say thank you to our guest, Alex Stadnick. Um, he has been more than a big help to us. He helped us get set up. I, I have bugged the living heck out of him. Absolutely not. He's a video podcast guy. Um, if you do want to listen, he also has a podcast with our oh, other yeah. friend, Joe Iverson. Yes. Um, it, do you want to tell us about us? Yeah. Tell about, so, about um, frankly, I was a little annoyed with both of you because you told me it's a movie podcast. We did not talk about movies on this. <laughs> I'll have to move on from that. Um, my my friend Joe and I run a movie podcast, um, The Alan Joe Draft House. It's a play. I don't know if anyone caught this. It's a play on the Alamo Draft House, which is a theater chain. Um and uh yeah we just talk about movies we bs about um movies everything to do with them and it's a good time so if you're interested come and watch and i will be sure to link that in the video description and yeah dude just thanks again so much you've helped us so much i am i am near i am just the spark that 
got you guys going yeah and you guys are killing it i love i love everything that's been happening so i uh, keep up the good work and, thanks uh, i'm excited Appreciate to see it. where yeah. this goes awesome so and now to zimmer yeah we have a hell of a football team here right everybody agree yes, yeah. as long as we're focused and we do what we're supposed to do we have a chance to be a hell of a football team the effort that you played <laughs> with was great today the enthusiasm was great today the execution was excellent, right? The things I talked about uh, the other day. And then you young guys, when you get in the game now, it's important, right? As soon as you get your opportunities, you gotta go in and show, because you never know when it's gonna be your turn, okay? So we gotta continue to go. Now we got a big one next week, right? Mm -hmm. On the road, the division champs we get to play, all right? Come here, Cookie. Oh, 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 Come on, get out of here. Hell yeah! Both of you two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Fight! <laughs>